What could you do to protect your pets if you're sick or injured? My product, Save My Pet ID Tag, helps you ensure that your beloved pets are safe and well cared for even when life isn't what you expect. Now, in this special episode, we are spotlighting two very awesome people. Now, one has never really been much of a jogger, but then he agreed to run 101 miles in a fundraiser. Another survived a rocket blast in Afghanistan during her stellar army career. Both got together and said, hey, <laughs> let's team up. And team up they did. I am honored to welcome to our show two people dedicated to pairing up service dogs with military veterans in need. Please, at this time, give pause and applause. From Dogtopia, we have Jordan Sorello and Gretchen Evans. Welcome, welcome. Thank you, thank you, thank you. <laughs> thank you so much. Happy to be here. What the heck is Dogtopia? Yeah, so Dogtopia is a spot where you can take your dog, whether you're going to work or if you just need them to get some socialization or exercise. And this is a safe place to do so. So we have, are an open facility dog daycare center. And the dogs that do really well in our daycare center get the opportunities to be able to board overnight with us. So if you're going out of town and you just want a safe space for your dog to be, we're going to yeah. do that space for you. Yeah, and you've got a, you do grooming, but you also do spa. I'm jealous. Yes. You had yes. to have spa. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So we're always finding ways to spoil your pups. So yes, yeah, some of our included services are like doing dog baths, those brush outs, nail trims, those spa services to make them look nice and pretty. And then a lot of dog topias have a certified groomer. So we're able to do those haircuts Good. as well. All right. Well, I'll let my dogs, Kona and Emma, know about it. I come from a military family and I really want to salute our other special guest, and uh, she is retired command. Oh, let me get this right. Command Sergeant Major? Major. Yes. Wow. Now, I've been schooled. My wife was one of the first combat MPs. She was a staff sergeant in the Army, nine years. And she said, Arden, when the title has command in front of it, that's a big deal. So humbly, tell us what that means, Gretchen. When you have the command before your rank as a sergeant major, that means that you are in command of troops. So sergeant majors can be staff people who, you know, logistics and things such as like this. But when they select you specifically to be in command of troop, then you get the honor of having the command in front of your, in front of your title. Does that get you ahead on dinner reservations? <laughs> no, not really. <laughs> no, like you, most people don't even know what it means. <laughs> well, but also you too have a connection with Dogtopia. Can you tell everybody what that is? Yes. So I am so honored and pleased to be considered the ambassador for the Dogtopia Foundation. And the foundation is is the is a great organization that raises funds and awareness to get service dogs into the hands of veterans who need them the most. And they have two other things that they really strive to do, and that is hiring people who are on the autistic spectrum to work in their dog nice. businesses, and also the Read Along program where children can go and read to a dog who is the perfect audience for a child who may be shy in reading out loud. So I travel throughout the United States and represent the Dog Tolia Foundation and talk about what a wonderful thing they're doing that's changing and saving lives every day. And I know I want people to go to a couple sites after our show. Is it uh, dogtopiafoundation.org, Jordan, and just dogtopia.com? What's the right yeah so that is the right sites if you want to go to the foundation and you want to see what we do on a national level dogtopiafoundation.org is going to be the right spot and then yeah depending on where you live in the area you can find out where all the active locations are at dogtopia.com but if you do know that there's one in your neighborhood just if you know the name look it up and it'll be right i love the name <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so we got to find out. We know how we're going to get into retired army grand poobar Gretchen in a minute. But Jordan, this is kind of cool. You just ran 101 miles to raise money to help get service dogs 
and you weren't really a runner? No. And <laughs> if my family's watching this or when they watch this, they will, they can second that. I <laughs> was the type growing up. I loved playing like basketball, baseball. Okay. I, I could run, but it I'd had to be distracting. It couldn't be the main focus. Like I, I never liked doing the mile in high school for the presidential fitness. I <laughs> never, when I got out of sports and I got out of high school, I never ran. And it was something that I really wanted to challenge myself to do. But also I think the biggest thing was that I wanted to find a way where how could I draw as much attention on the foundation and these efforts as possible. And I knew I had to do something crazy. So I decided 101 miles would be crazy enough. Well, there was a movie, 101 Dalmatians. Now there's 101 <laughs> miles co completed by there you go. Uh, Jordan Sorello, which is pretty awesome. I mean, what is your running style? Do you have a long gait? Do you pray a lot? What's your running style? Do you lumber? Um, yeah, so my running style, it's called the Ultra Shuffle, which uh, <laughs> can be very easily confused with somebody who looks like they're just kind of jogging. So it's really short strides, and it's just you don't want to use up too much energy. Like when you see people running marathons or in their runs, there's like a really long stride. Mine yeah. is not that. Since I'm not trying to cover a short distance, I'm covering a long one. It's this little like kind of shuffle. And how long did you train to do this? Yeah, so I trained starting early, like it was about eight months of training. And I want to say it was like early September was when I was like, okay, I really needed to make a decision on whether or not I'm actually going to be able to do this. And for everybody out there, Gretchen joined you for the final 10 miles. Gretchen, please tell people you have a service dog and I don't think you have long strides anymore, right? <laughs> so when I found out that Jordan was doing this, I really wanted to be a part of it. And I told him, I said, I want to join you for the whole thing, but I've got the you day got what? you're getting out that I'd already signed up with with my uh, adaptive team. I'm broken. So I said, I'll fly from Chicago to Minneapolis and I'll catch you at the last 10 miles of your run and just give him a little bit of encouragement when he really uh, needed it the most perhaps says i'm a distance runner too i'm not you know I'm an, I'm an endurance athlete and so i know how that feels those last 10 miles it's exciting but you really want to be done and encouragement is really important so anyway my stride is you know i match my stride to whoever i'm running with but if it was okay. just me i do run pretty fast on occasion and uh, i'm starting to slow down you know i'm in my 60s and starting to get some wear and tear but i'm still a pretty good runner and, oh yeah yeah she and definitely you, was she you could tell just when she was out there with me like don't let anything fool you she can throw it out you got a military woman telling you don't drop and give me 20 run and give me 10 more right 10 more miles was that what i was actually <laughs> i was actually glad she didn't run the full hundred with me because she would have <laughs> shown me up i would have been just in the dust she would have been way ahead of me so over what time period did you do this distance? And I know it, it wasn't it started on Memorial Day weekend in Wisconsin? Yeah. Yeah. Yep. So I started on Sunday, which I believe was the 26th or 25th. I'm getting confused. 26th. Um, 26th. Thank you. I started on the 26th at 7 a.m. And then I ran through the, the night into Memorial Day. Oh, so you didn't sleep? No, no. Wow. That, yeah. Seriously, dude, have you ever done a 10 or 5K before? I, I did, like, maybe when I was a kid, I did something similar. You hated but, the president's mile. Yeah, I heard you yeah. about that. <laughs> yeah, but otherwise, before that, no, up until the training, I did the training for it. So, like, the farthest I got in training was I ran a 50-miler overnight to, like, simulate what it would be like on okay. no sleep running the distance but prior to any of the training anything like that no i had no no idea of what it even took to run a 3k or 5k or three was miles. there other how many people were there others involved or you just had a bunch of cheerleaders around you or what yeah that was my aid team so we had you know my fiance was out there she rode a bike to kind of help just say be her there first for name me. so she loves Michaela. you 
Okay. Yeah, Michaela, my beautiful fiance, super That's supportive. Nice. She ran uh, track in college and cross country. So she was kind of like my coach as well. And we had a van that followed me with some of my family members in there. You're kind of like they the were... Diane Nyad of the land. You know? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> She's way better than I am. Yeah. <laughs> she, what she did across the, from Cuba to Florida, was it? That's yeah, insane. Keys. Yeah, hey, everyone. Insane. We're speaking with Gretchen Evans and Jordan Sorello. They are with Dogtopia and they have we're going to dive into a little bit more about this 101 mile run they did and why y'all need to pay attention to it because they're trying to get trained service dogs paired up with military veterans so we're going to take a short break and you all know the drill oh i said a drill in front of a sergeant i can't believe it we're going to sit stay we'll be right back hey have you heard four-legged life has a new digital newsletter here, let me show you how you get yourself subscribed. So you just type in four legged life and that'll take you to the website. There we go. And this magic thing just appears and you type in your email address. I'll use, let's see, how about coolest dog ever at gmail.com. And <laughs> that's me. And then you just click on this uh, thing here. There you go. It's the new digital newsletter from Four Legged Life. Get subscribed today. I am saluting two incredible people from Dogtopia. We have Jordan Sorello. He is a regional manager in the Wisconsin area. And as we mentioned, we have a retired command sergeant major, Gretchen Evans, who serves as the Dogtopia Foundation ambassador. And you did this 101 miles with Gretchen coming in for the final 10, which you couldn't probably pick a better teammate than Gretchen, right? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. She, when I needed her most at those 90 miles, she was there. She brought the energy and she helped bring it home. Is there something you said to him? And please don't use vulgarity, Sergeant. <laughs> Me too. Uh, no, how did you? you, know, you, when you, you, you there, were, yeah, I was singing Army Cadence. Oh, yep. give me, give us yeah. one. Come on, so if it's, our, if it's safe. Kidding, which made, put a big smile on his face. And then, you know, I wish just the one thing you want to do is take your mind off of what you're doing. So I wish just, you know, first of all, I wanted to say thank you because I know that my service dog saved and changed my life. And what he was doing was so important to me and all my fellow veterans who are benefiting from his great effort because yeah. service dogs certainly make a difference in a veteran's life. They say that it, it reduces depression and anxiety and, and suicidal ideation by up to 80%, and which is unheard of. But, you know, these dogs are, become our best friends and our battle buddies. And so I talked to Dar Jordan and just told him how th thankful I was for what he was doing. Sing some cadence. Okay, oh, you gotta cadence. give me a, a, come on, give us one. Hey, you ready? Okay, so up in the morning for the break of day. I don't like it, no way. Up in the morning for, oh, I went to rush to the mess hall to get my food. I said, mess sergeant, feed me, please. Mess sergeant said with a great big grin, if you're gonna be airborne, you gotta be thin. <laughs> I guess I'm not going to be airborne. Okay. <laughs> awesome. Awesome. And we do want to dive in because you've got a couple of special four leggers in your life, Gretchen. You have Aura and Rusty, and it's up to you, but you serve combat in Afghanistan. And folks, she's going to blush, but I'm telling you, we have a real American hero and leader here. And the fact that she was awarded the Bronze Star, that's a friggin big deal she's in the u.s veteran hall of fame and my favorite is she was awarded the prestigious pat tillman award for service and was at the espies so i hope you're not blushing too bad but tell us a little bit about your situation and why the service dogs in your life have made you command life in a great way so Aura was my first service dog, and because um, I'm totally deaf from the blast in Afghanistan, I needed a hearing dog that could alert me to sounds to give me back my independence. Going from being a hearing person for 46 years to being totally deaf was devastating to me. It ended my career. It threw me into a life that I was unfamiliar with, not being able to hear and to communicate. 
So Aura was trained by America's Vet Dogs, who Dog Taught Me the Foundation does raise funds for. She was the first hearing dog they ever trained. And Are you kidding? And what kind of breed is Aura? Aura is a cross, a breed between a Labrador and a Golden ret Retriever. Okay. Now, which is a perfect mix. Yeah. So Aura, the, when I got her, it was like all of a sudden I didn't feel like a deaf person anymore. And I could navigate life because Aura would tell me when she heard a sound. And the way she does that is she pokes me with her nose on my thigh when she hears a sound, the doorbell, the microwave, nice. the, washer, the dryer. I'm not crazy about that one, but she still tells me when it's done. And also she allows me to drive legally because she can alert me to emergency vehicles, whereas before I couldn't hear them. So I was not a safe driver and couldn't have a driver's license. So you can imagine what it thought, my independence back. But anyway, when she pokes me with her nose, then I looked at her and I say, where's the sound? And she takes me to the sound. I love uh, it. Two years ago, we retired Aura. She had worked for me for 10 years and I traveled a lot, was doing speaking engagements. And like I said, I have an adaptive athletic team and we do all kinds of crazy things. In fact, <laughs> in two weeks, we're going to go summit Kilimanjaro. And so I asked him, really, I, I was just going to maybe go to a movie in two weeks, but <laughs> wow. <laughs> Well, that's all good too. But I asked America's Vet Dogs that they would find another and train another hearing dog for me because so I could let Aura retire. And so they trained Rusty, who's a purebred Labrador, who's the size of a small pony. He is <laughs> really tall. And so now Rusty travels with me and does lots of activities with me. I've taken Rusty whitewater rafting and zip lining and he paddled. Wow. I heard he's me. kind of a go for it goofball a little bit too. He's a go for it kind of dog. And and so these both of these dogs, you know, got me out of that dark place when I first was injured and was trying to recover and find my new passion and purpose. And I knew that a so these dogs could do that for me, that there was other veterans out there that needed the same thing that I did. So when the dog, when I found the dog Toby Foundation or they found me, I said, what can I do to help? And they said, you can tell your story and help yeah. get the word out that these dogs are available free of cost to veterans and they can help them and navigate their new life post-military. Well, well said. And I do salute, salute you for your military service. And I am a big fan of the service dogs. I've done work with canine companions when I lived in Oceanside, California. Now I'm in Dallas and we're working together on some things. And this brings us back to Jordan Sorello because Jordan, I was doing some research on the Dogtopia Foundation. I hope these stats are correct, but your nonprofit arm of Dogtopia, I guess have raised over $3 million and have paired up about 370 teams of service dogs to veterans, correct? Yeah, that's pretty accurate. Yeah. And so, it's, it's honestly, it's awesome to see because I first heard Gretchen's story in 2022, I believe, at the Dogtopia conference. I got to hear it in person. I've heard it multiple times, but I just remember sitting at that conference when she told us our st her story and she's told it in just such detail, everything that she went through, the emotions she was feeling, life, you know, right after just kind of the injury and post military career. And I'm telling you, the entire room was dead silent. Like everybody was just captivated by the story. And I just told myself right then and there, too, after you know, we were able to just kind of celebrate her and celebrate some of those veterans that have done those things that I wanted to do something really big because like, I yeah. was so proud that I worked for a company that, you know, they like, this is part of Dogtopia. This is not something separate. This is something that, you know, I am just as passionate about as I am working with the dogs in my facility. And, you know, to be able to honor them in this way of running 101 miles. And there was many times out there during the run or during training where I've had my feet literally just give out on me. I haven't been able to walk days after the runs where I'm just in a lot of pain, but I know I have to go out and run and train for this event. And every time I felt any of those discomforts, 
I thought back to Gretchen's story and I mm-hmm. thought back to, you know, all the times veterans who have or are currently serving and all the discomforts that they've gone through. And, you know, did they have the choice just to go back into a warm bed when, you know, the, yeah. you know, the sirens are calling and they need to be in action? And the answer is no. And I just knew that any discomfort or anything that I go through is only a fraction of what they have had to. And, You know, it's an honor to be able to kind of feel the way I'm feeling, knowing that I might be able to provide them some comfort. So Gretchen, he wasn't in your troop, but he is because he's in a troop to help service members have service dogs. What is something about Jordan that you admired when you saw him get it out on this 101 run? mile run. Our about Jordan is as a young man that he took action. Lots of people, you know, hear things that touch their hearts and they think, oh, I would really like to do something about that. And then, you know, in the next 24, 40 hours, life takes over and and they forget about it. Or, you know, they don't have time or they don't make time. And Jordan, you know, made a promise to himself and to others that he was going to do something about this and he did it and it was hard i know how hard running 100 miles is and he still is enthusiastic after the run you know some people say you know it's like childbirth i'm never doing that again okay? and then you well know, jordan you doesn't have to worry about childbirth <laughs> oh, yeah. Yeah. Oh. Yeah. but lots of people are one and done kind of people but i think what it really did is that i saw it fuel the fire of his passion uh by saying, I call it the say-do ratio, saying you're going to do something and then actually doing it. That's where the courage comes in and is actually showing up to the start line in front of people publicly and say, I'm going to do this, not knowing what the X factor could be out there. He could have had rainstorms. He could have had all kinds of things go wrong. And so I always say the courage is saying that you're going to do it and then showing up to do it. And that, you know, that that shows a lot of grit and gumption and resilience. And it shows that he does care about the greater good out there, that he is not what I call a self-leaking ice cream cone. It's not about Jordan, okay? It's about others. And so he certainly is in my troop and he's on my road team and uh, I'm proud to have him there. What do you think? Are you blushing, Jordan? It means a lot. It does. I, yeah, I really do care about just kind of the impact that it makes. And no, that means a lot. Thank you. Say do ratio, everyone. That is the message of the day for sure. And how did it go? How can people, can they still make donations? Jordan, what can we do to help? Because we're having you say it on this show and we want people to do something. Yeah. So to be honest, I, you know, it doesn't have to be just towards my um donation campaign you can find it on the dogtopia of woodbury facebook and instagram or the dogtopia of eau claire facebook or instagram where we have a link for my specific fundraising but honestly if you're just interested in learning more about dogtopia foundation and you know donating to the the nationwide cause like you can just go on the dogtopiafoundation.org and that's where you're able to donate as well now, we Absolutely. can't do this show and without end, saying uh, something about um, what Gretchen did before and after. So you help him with the final 10 miles, and we're going to have you do one more uh, Army chant before you, we let you go. But what did you do before and what did you do after? So, oh, so after? Before and before? after. Didn't you do something before, too? Didn't you... Uh, um, run something beforehand and then met him and then did it the appellation oh yeah so after i left jordan i flew to Asheville, north carolina and hopped on the appalachian trail with 12 mixed ability (laughs) veterans as part of an organization that helps people recalibrate and so you know I, i traded my running shoes in for my hiking boots and had a beautiful hike in north carolina on the appalachian trail and that was such and for how many people. days? Five. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. you didn't sit on the couch after you helped Jordan. You got your butt off the couch and on the trail, right? That's right. Yes, ma'am, I did. <laughs> Come on, give us another army. <laughs> Come on, this is fun. This is fun. Okay, let's see. When my granny was 96, 
She did PT just for kicks. When my granny was 97, she ran all the way to heaven. When my granny was 98, she said, drop down and give me eight. When my granny was 99, she ran PT just for fun. Nice, <laughs> nice. Hey, everybody, we have been so honored to have on our show two superheroes, I'm going to call them Jordan Sorello and Gretchen Evans. They represent Dogtopia. Go to dogtopia.com. Check out dogtopiafoundation.org. See all the great words, works that they're doing. And personally, I love them. I'm a master certified pet first aid instructor. Been doing that since 2011. And many of the people I've trained are people from Dogtopia. And my feeling is this, Jordan. If you're going to take care of my most priceless asset, not my car, not my house, my dog, you better know what to do and what not to do when minutes count in a pet first aid emergency. So personally and professionally, I salute your organization for recognizing the need to have them certified in pet first aid. And I don't care if it's my program or someone else. That's a big deal for pet parents. Absolutely. Absolutely. It's a big deal for me. I own three as well. So it's a big deal you, for me too. Well, we heard your name of your fiance. I, I have some <laughs> dog ears I feel that are perking up in the background. You better salute your three. Yeah. So I have Harper, who is an Australian cattle dog. I have Wally, who's an Australian shepherd. And then I have Indy, who is a mini Aussie doodle. So a lot of Aussies in the house. Oh yeah. A lot of brain power. All right. Yeah. What's your parting message, Jordan? I guess my parting message would be, you know, I, this is not the end of just some of the things I'd like to do towards the foundation. I hope this is only the beginning and, you know, whether it is, you know, a dog in your life, a veteran in your life, you know, hold them close, hold them tight, be thankful for them. And also hopefully you guys can find a, you know, if it's not the Dogtopia Foundation, something to back that is equally as impactful, because I promise you it makes you feel so full inside just seeing the the benefits that it provides i love that and retired commander sergeant major gretchen evans what's your parting message my parting message is that if you if you can help you should it's great to believe in people and it always feels better to give than to receive and one little alibi i'll throw in there just because i'm bodacious is that you know i'm a i'm an, motivational speaker and I talk about teamwork and leadership and grit and gumption and anybody company that would like to have me come out and give a keynote I will donate that speaker fees to the dog Tobia foundation you heard it here that's a big woof I love it thanks so much for making our tails wag by watching this guest interview from Arden Moore's four-legged life 